All right, today I want to welcome Dick Silman. He's a graduate of Carnegie Mellon University and Stanford U University. Wow. A VP of Engineering, he's a Vice President of Engineering and Position Imaging. He's created and shipped many innovative products for companies like Apple, Microsoft, Sun, with projects like Apple TV, Magic Mice, Web TV, and uh, Sun Workstations. He's really an amazing person person because whenever we've talked, he's very subtle in who he mentions, but he's been blessed to be around some great people. So that makes him great. So I want to introduce Dick today. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Bill. Thank you for that uh, glowing intro. It's all true, <laughs> but it marks me as a guy who's been around the block quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, you're by definition, kind of a techie nerd. Is that what you are? Yeah. Electrical engineer is my okay. uh, training in college, but, uh, for more than 20 years, it's been software stuff as well as hardware. I like to say systems design. Got it, got it. Okay, give me your current stats, your age, height, blood pressure, uh, and your A1C these days. Oh boy, um, I hadn't prepared for all that. I'm uh, a young 66 years old. Uh, my BP is probably, uh, I don't know, 105 or something, over 70, it's, it's, been, it's been really good. And- um, oh, Wow, that's impressive. A1C, I don't know, for something good. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you I, I, say that like that's an awesome number. They, <laughs> those are great numbers. Well, I'll tell you, even my doctor is kind of like, how the hell can you possibly have these scores? I don't understand. And I said, well, you know, I've lost uh, 36 pounds, and that certainly helped a lot. So yes. um, I'm feeling very energetic, very fit. Uh, still working full time and still keeping my rock and roll band going after 30 plus years. So uh, it's a busy life, but we're very, very grateful. Do you find that having, do you have more energy at this point in your life to do the rock and roll to be, I guess you're going away for three weeks tomorrow, like to do all these things at your age, do you feel like you have more energy now? Oh, uh, there's no question. I absolutely do. There's a lot of things that we're getting a little bit annoying that are now just nothing like oh i left those glasses upstairs oh i gotta go upstairs now it's like i just bound up the stairs i don't even think about it so um it yeah i gotta say my lifestyle in the past year plus a quarter has really changed a lot because uh, i look for more opportunities to be in motion um i mean i have the kind of work that is sitting in a chair for hours on end doing engineering work and then my hobby is music where i make records and that is more sitting in a chair for more hours in front of speakers trying to dial the perfect tone. So all that sitting and all that sitting, it's really uh, not what your body needs and what it wants. So I'm finding ways now to just make sure that every day I get up and out and walk a few miles, um, ride my bike, swim laps, do anything I can do on a, used to be, well, gee, did I work out today? Well, now it's every day of a minimum of an hour of some kind of motion. Well, that, that's incredible. You know, I, I think our viewers would love to hear the beginning of your journey. Could you walk us through what got you into fitness and what sparked your interest? Sure. Um, you know, I've kind of always been a chub, I would say. Even as a kid, I was never the one that they would pick to be on the baseball team or whatever. I actually got a letter in basketball, seventh grade, and I felt so guilty about it because I don't think I played more than 10 minutes in one game. And since my team won the championship, I still got a letter. So I haven't really been a sports person, but I love things that I can do by myself. So lap swimming, weightlifting, all my life, uh, I try to do things where there's not a whole team depending on my physical performance. But of late and you know, just in the past sort of decade or so, I just had been tired of carrying all this extra weight. And the big surprise was my son came home from college, I didn't even recognize him. He looked like a different person because he had become very trim. He used to be uh, like me, a chubby kid, and he was the only one of my three kids who was heavy. And he said, Dad, one day I just woke up and decided I didn't want to be the fat kid anymore. And I was so impressed by what he did in three months. I mean, he changed, no more gummy worms, no more sugar, sitting around you know, on a game console and instead uh, going to the gym. And I thought, boy, if he can do it, then I absolutely have to do it. So my wow. Son so your son was your inspiration. Uh, one of several inspirations. Another one was a chance meeting uh, just last December at a musician's ball where we were getting up to jam, and I 
saw a drummer that I knew from three or four years ago, and I barely recognized him. I said, <laughs> are you are you Jesse? You can't be. Je and it turns out, yeah, Tim, but he looked like 30 years younger. Yeah. But oh, my goodness, what happened to the guy that I knew could kind of barely keep up on the drums? And now he looked absolutely amazing. So he said, well, there's this guy, Bill, you should you should, you know, get to know him. And that's how our journey started together. That's awesome. And I'm I'm glad I, I, I do believe I've made a difference and I will continue to do so. And not everybody gives me that opportunity. Hey, I want to talk real quick about our belief systems. OK, you are a tech nerd, logical, always thinking logic. And I remember when we entered this, your mindset was maybe different than it was today. Your belief systems and belief systems counts, you know, initials are BS. Belief systems interchange with bullshit. And 95 percent of them are programmed from what we see on social media and the way we're raised. So can you talk about your belief systems and if and when they changed? Sure. I mean, I think um, in my sort of DNA and heredity, uh, most of the people in my family uh, have struggle with body image issues or weight issues. And so it's like, well, there's nothing you can do. It's just your DNA and blah, blah, blah. So starting with kind of a defeatist attitude, of, well, I'm never going to be thin. I'm never going to be trim. But let me see what I can do to at least be fit. And then, uh, you know, in starting to work with you, I realized that that kind of programming or that sort of defeatist mindset is just a terrible starting point to start from. Um, and also, I'm, I'm much older now. I've had the yo-yo all my life of going up and down. I have the charts to prove that uh, I probably lost and regained hundreds of pounds over the course sure. of my time. Uh, and I think that's because in, in our society, there's so much bad food that we're just swimming in an ocean of fast foods and convenience. And, and when you work along like tech job, they here in Silicon Valley, there's a lot of free treats and everything always being sure. dispensed to try to keep you sugared up and coding all night long. Uh, and I realized, you know, um, that's all under our control. These are choices we can make. We can look right, at every single right. thing in our lives and we can actually, maybe we can't control the event, but we can certainly control how we respond to it, how we react to it. So I decided to stop absorbing that programming that, well, you're never going to really be great. And am I a skinny guy right now? No, I'm not thin, uh, but I'm so much more agile and nimble than I was. I'm, I walk all over town. I never take my car to do anything. I just like, I want to go to the post office. That's a four mile walk. It's fine. I, I look forward to the opportunity to be outside. So you can take things that uh, and even in the rain, we've been having a lot of rain out here in California, and right. I'm loving it. I walk around in the rain because it's, I think to myself, you know, it only rains here a dozen days out of the whole year. Why not get out there and enjoy one of those rare moments in the rain? So you can take something that you might think of as negative and you can really turn it on its head. Right. I think that's that's incredible. The other thing I'll tell you is I think the way we look is indicative of our health. Okay. You look 10 to 15 years younger, and I'm not saying that. You just look fantastic, and you're, you're, you can just see it. And, you know, I think this is going to be one of your best vacations in a long time because you're going to be active and going and proud, you know, to be in your skin. It's, it's very admirable. You did touch on, you know, you're, you're busy and high tech, and you have all this pressure, and how you balance your busy schedule with all those pressures you kind of touched on, you integrate exercise. Sometimes you do a Zoom and walking or whatever. Any other little nuggets you can give our viewers? Yeah, um, I've had a complete change in how I think about food. And this, I really got to give you the credit, Bill, because one of the things you said, and you have a lot of really cool nuggets that are very <laughs> short, and very succinct. And one was food is fuel. Yeah. Food is not love. Food is not acceptance. Uh, you know, maybe you could say food is a very short term endorphin rush or something. It but is. Food, it is. Uh, I think about uh, like, for example, I'm getting on a flight and I'm taking business class because I was able to have enough miles to pay for that. And guess what? <laughs> they offer lobster and blah, blah, you know, fancy meal. I checked the box that said no food. And wow. my wife was like, really? You know, you're in the business class. You ought to take advantage of the luxury thing. And I'm like, I'm going to be lying or you know sitting on a on a 15 hour flight. I'm not going to really be able to get up and move all that much. The last thing I want to have is a belly full 
of, of stuff that might include cake, you never know. And I don't, I don't want that. I don't want to be lying around for hours with a full belly. So I'd rather just, uh, this is a flight that leaves at midnight anyway. So okay. Okay. I'd rather have a healthy dinner, 6, 7 p.m., uh, you know, get to the airport with plenty of time to be not stressed. But there's just no reason for me to eat on that flight. And then there'll be a breakfast later and I'll have some coffee and an egg or whatever. But I don't, in the past, it would always be like, well, I got to eat because they're offering this good food. I better eat it. And now I'm like, no, actually, I don't need that fuel. It's a smarter move and I'll have less consequences if I just try to be smart about it. It's, it's funny you say that eating is a form of getting L dopamine like any other addiction. And we got to turn it into something positive. And I think we're there. I, I don't get a ton of pleasure from eating, but I get L dopamine every time I walk into the gym. Mm -hmm. I get an L dopamine every time I walk in. My girlfriend is happy to see me. It's these little things. So I don't get the food L dopamines, but I get everywhere else. Yep. Um, lastly, five tips to help somebody that was in your shoes a year ago when you met Jesse. You didn't know Jesse. What are your five tips to layman's terms? Five. Let me think. Um, well, first is your mindset. Okay. You call it belief systems or BS. I mean, it's so really, really true that uh, what you believe in your heart um, affects everything about your performance. And that could be in sports, that could be academically, it could be musically, and it can certainly be in your health. You have to have a positive mindset that says, I can do this. I've seen other people have done it, so why not me? So okay. I think that's step one is uh, take control of your mindset and don't let others put programming on top right, of you. Right, right. You have yeah. control of what is in your mind at all times. So that's one tip. The second one, I guess I would say, I'm a foodie. I mean, I love to eat and I love to cook. And I'm fine, I can, uh, over Thanksgiving, Christmas this year, I had so much pleasure feeding my family, my kids and, and their friends, but I didn't need to partake in all of it personally myself. I, as a chef, I can taste it, make sure that it's coming out the way I want, but I really don't need to have a whole plate of this and a whole plate of that. Like I used to right. use it as an opportunity to indulge. And sure. so I'd say tip two is, you know, just kind of be mindful. Mindful. Uh, okay. So mindset, mind. mindful. What would be number three? Um, I guess surround yourself with good people. You know, okay. I think that it's important to not be around negative folks who are going to either tear you down or just make your journey harder. Uh, you can choose positive reinforcement, right? To be around positive people who believe in you and support you. Uh, so, I mean, not everybody can, uh, but if possible, try to make some choices about your associates, um, so that you can be around more positive people and, and get, you get a lot of, uh, I get a lot of inspiration from being around other folks who have conquered sure. whatever their goals are. Uh, let's see, do I have a four? <laughs> I'll let you off the hook. <laughs> yeah. Those are three good ones. Those right. are really three good ones. And you've given us a tremendous amount of information, but you know, mindset, mindful and positive people, that's the key that supports our journey. I wanna thank you for your time today, Dick. It's, it's a pleasure working with you and you're so understated for your abilities, but I think your views will resonate with a lot of people. And I want to thank you for taking the time. Well, it's my pleasure, Bill. I really appreciate working with you. And uh, you are also a very unique and amazing person that I'm very grateful to have your help. Well, thank you, Dick. I appreciate it.